Last time, we took the Bantam Tools milling machine out of the box and set it up. We're technically ready to start milling, but we need to design something first. One of the most useful things you can make with your mill is a simple breakout board. Prototyping electronics with a breadboard can be fast and fun. However, you'll often come across parts that are surface mount only. So, how do we get a part like this onto our breadboard? For this example, we're going to use this EEPROM chip that comes in a thin shrink small outline package, or TSSOP. While you can find EEPROMs in the bigger dip package, this is what I had lying around. And some components, like a number of sensors out there, only come in surface mount versions. We'll use KiCad to quickly make this board. Any PCB layout software should work so long as it can produce Gerber files. But I already know KiCad, and it's free, so we'll just stick with that. If you're not familiar with KiCad, I definitely recommend checking out my Intro to KiCad series on this channel. Open up KiCad and start a new project. I'll give it some arbitrary name, like the EEPROM part number followed by breakout. Double-click the PCB file to start PCB new. One cool feature of KiCad is that we don't need to make a schematic in order to create a layout. We could just drop a few footprints down and connect pins together. This can save you some time, especially if you don't plan to use this layout as part of a larger project. If you search for Bantam Tools PCB Rules, you should see one of their support pages. Click on it and you'll get a design rules list. We'll use these to configure the design rules in KiCad. Note that the page lists specifications for the other mill, which was the previous name for the company. At the top, you can see that the Bantam Tools mill has the same design rules as the other mill Pro, so we'll use those. Back in KiCad, click on the Inches button to change the units. Click on Setup Design Rules. Click on the Global Design Rules tab. Enter .006 for the minimum track width. 0.028 for the via diameter, and 0.016 for the via drill. We got the via diameter by adding 6 mils of trace on either side of a 16 mil drill hole. We'll make the traces a little bigger than the minimum. Back in the net classes tab, enter 0.01 for the clearance, 0.01 for the track width, 0.036 for the via diameter, and 0.016 for the via drill. We'll replicate these for the microvia rules, but we won't need them. Enter 0.01 for the differential pair width and gap rules as placeholders, since we're not working with differential pairs here either. Click OK. Change your grid to 50 mils. Now, we're ready to add our parts. On the product page for the AT24C04C EEPROM part, we see that it's an 8-pin TSSOP with a 4.4 millimeter width. Click Place footprint, and click somewhere in your work area. Click Select by Browser. These are the footprint libraries that come with KiCad, so we don't need to import any new files. On the left pane, select Package underscore SO. In the middle pane, select TSSOP-8 underscore 4.4. You can verify that the footprint looks correct in the right pane. Double-click the footprint and click to place it in the work area. I recommend finding an easy to remember coordinate, like x of 6 and y of 4. Click Place Footprint again, click on the work area, and go back into the browser. This time, select Connector Pin Header 2.54 mm. These are the standard 100 mm headers that will mate to common breadboards. With four pins on each side of our part, select the 1x4 vertical part. Because of our grid snapping, you should be able to easily line it up vertically with the TSSOP in between pins 2 and 3. Move it to the left of the TSSOP just so that the courtyard outlines are no longer overlapping. Place another 4-pin header to the right of the TSSOP. The pins of the headers should line up vertically, and the horizontal distance between the headers should be a multiple of 0.1 inches so that it will fit in a breadboard. Next, we need to add a board outline. Click the Graphic Line button and click on the Edge Cuts layer. Draw a box around the headers, just to the outside of the through holes. Click on the Route Tracks button and make sure that the front copper layer is selected. Connect the TSSOP pins to the adjacent header pins. 
feel free to change the grid to help you draw the traces more easily. If you were to run the design rules check, you'll probably get all sorts of errors, but that's because we didn't electrically connect things in a schematic. Click the Plot button to bring up the plotting window. At the top, click on the folder icon under Output Directory and create a new directory named Gerbers in your project folder. Select that folder and click Yes if asked about using relative paths. Uncheck all layers except for front copper and edge cuts. Remember, we're making a single-sided PCB with no solder mask and no silk screen. Uncheck Plot Footprint Values and Plot Footprint References. We won't be able to print these values with our mill anyway. Make sure you leave Exclude PCB Edge Layer from Other Layers checked. Otherwise, you might end up with a board outline on your top copper layer. Click Plot to create Gerbers for the top layer and board outline. Click Generate Drill Files and click Generate Drill File. Close out of the plotting windows, save your project, and close PCB New. We're technically ready to import our Gerbers into the Bantam Tools software. However, I find that their software doesn't display small traces very well, so I recommend checking your Gerbers in another program. In the KiCad Project Manager, click on Gerber Viewer. In Gerb View, click File, Open Excel on Drill Files. You should see NPTH and PTH files in your Gerbers folder. Select and open the PTH file. Click File, Open Gerber File, and open your Edge Cuts file. Finally, click File, Open Gerber again, and open your Front Copper file. Make sure that your traces, board outline, and drill holes all line up. Close out of Gerb View and KiCad. Even if you're not connected to the milling machine, it's still a good idea to check with the software to make sure that you're physically capable of milling the board. Open the Bantam Tools software and click the Open Files button to import your Gerbers. Select your front copper file and click Open. The top layer should be set to the Gerber file you just selected. Click Change next to Outline. Open your Edge Cuts file. You should see that the software automatically selected the non-plated through-hole file for the holes file. This might be correct in some cases. I don't have the chemicals on hand to do copper plating to make plated through-holes. But KiCad assumes that we want plated through-holes for our headers, so we actually need to use the PTH file here because that's where the drill hit locations are stored. Click Change for holes and open the PTH drill file. Click OK to accept the Gerber files. By default, the software will choose the 132nd inch end mill to try and make the whole board. That won't quite work, as we'll need to use a variety of bits. If you look at the simulated board routing, you should see red lines where the machine won't be able to mill because the bit tip is too large. Try replacing the end mill with a 5mm PCB engraving bit. The traces should look much better, but notice that the outline and through holes are now red. Try adding the 132nd inch end mill in addition to the engraving bit. This looks a lot better and no red lines. However, if you look closely at the corner pads of the TSSOP, you'll see that they taper slightly. While this would technically work, it's not an ideal pad. To get closer, let's try replacing the 132nd inch end mill with the 164th inch end mill. Okay, the traces and pads look much better. You're welcome to keep playing around with the bits, but since we don't see any red lines, we know that we're physically capable of making this board with the bits we have on hand. Click on the Show Preview Only button. You'll notice that some copper was left intact around our traces. This could make soldering difficult in some situations, or pick up unwanted signals on boards with high frequencies. Some milling machines let you do a rub-out where it mills away all the unwanted copper. Another option would be to create a ground pour in KiCad so that this whole area is electrically connected to a ground pin. However, our board is simple enough and low enough frequency that we can just leave the unwanted copper as is. As you can see, you can throw together a simple PCB design in KiCad very quickly. You can then run a simple set of Gerbers and then import them into the Bantam Tools software in a matter of minutes. We're ready to mill at this point, but that'll be for the next episode. If you want to keep up with this channel, please subscribe, and I'll see you then.
Thank you.